What a beautiful morning. Came out here and grabbed my coffee. Well, it's still morning, but I've been out here for a while. Been trimming leaves, going through the totes. And I thought, well, it was quiet when I started. Now I hear a jet. It's just so gorgeous. How blessed I am to have this. It's a lot of work. Only because I've set up a dozen gardens, but you know what? I love it. And I've got more ideas as we go. The ideas are just constantly in my head and so much to do and so little time. I still wanna work on a water feature. I wanna make a new ball that anybody could do for hummingbirds. But today I came out here and I've just been listening to the birds. I know I have to go in and do hummingbirds and I've been looking at the rainbow garden. I just can't get over how gorgeous it is and I'm almost ready to tackle that. That's the only part I've got left. And then of course I can change the bottom off, out. All these buckets, like I don't have a bucket there. Here I catch the water. And I do have to tell you how I'm propagating now because I come up with a different way and every single cutting I put in there is growing. So I do have to share that with you. I don't know how many of you propagate, but you can propagate mint. This is a potato mint. This is, isn't something you really make tea out of. It doesn't taste good, but this grows these little tubers and they look like little potatoes, kind of like your like new potatoes, little tiny ones, and they're really, really good. So I want to get more of those growing. And of course the watermelon I'll have soon and the garlic chives. I mean, this, there's just so much fun stuff. But as far as propagating, let me know if you propagate things because what do we have in here? I've got potato mint. I've got different types of kale or collard in here. I've got a little pepino, looks a little yellow. It was yellow when I picked it. So it's I was it's not gonna get go from yellow to green. I'm just waiting to see if there's new growth. This I have nothing in because what I want to do is set these up so they're ready to go. That makes life easier. I do things backwards a lot. And I want to keep this covered because I don't want any cabbage moths getting in there, getting my brassicas as they're growing roots. The reason I say I do things backwards, and it is backwards, so take it from me. I start my seeds and then as soon as they start growing and I start potting them up, I'm looking for where I'm gonna put them. That's actually backwards for me. I should be setting up the totes first, like setting up containers to propagate in, and then go do my cuttings and then plant my plants. It actually makes life easier. Think about it. Your plants are growing and it's like, wow, I gotta get this out in the garden, I'm gonna plant it. And that's the way it should be. Because now I just took some squash and I literally, no joke, threw it in a tote over there. I let them grow in here, didn't know where I was gonna put them. I wanted to get more corn going and then that tote on the end there, I had a basket over it. Well, you know what's growing here? A beautiful eggplant. Look at this, came up from seed. I didn't plant it in there. So I'm gonna get that covered with some tool. Here I don't really have anything and I can put something in here and this is, the tomatoes coming back that I haven't seen any hornworms on here anymore. And I haven't had the deer, I don't think, through here. I think the deer have moved on. They moved to different areas. But see here, I've got to get that watermelon off. That's the wa watermelon Gary found that I didn't know was there. I just threw some old straggly squash plants in there. Why? Because I planted them first before I was thinking about where I wanted to plant them. And I sometimes want to find a certain area to grow them in. It's like, well, do I plant them here? Do I plant them there? So I have found for me, now that doesn't mean that every time I go to plant, I'm going to have a place for them because I can pot them up and put them aside. I'm going to do this year something different. And before we, you know, all winter is what I'm saying. I'm going to start setting up these totes and have them all ready to go. In other words, and you could do this even if you're wherever you are in the winter. Get your, you know, if you're cleaning your yard, get your leaves in there. Get your paper in there. Get everything in there and have it all ready. So when spring comes and you start your seeds, you'll be ahead of the game. Not that it has to break down because I'm going to show you something I did and how quickly it will break down. You grow as it breaks down. I'll tell you know what I'll I'll show you a back half peak and then we'll talk about it another time. I'm trying to compost here. And as I'm trying to work in here, everything's growing. Look at that. 
I got squash growing in there and things growing in there. And I'll explain more. Look at that. I got a bowl down here I made that I haven't even set up yet. I've got all this, these things and projects that I haven't done. Well, I want to be able to go through and get the totes cleared out. And here I don't have a whole lot to clear out. The potato mint will die back when the weather completely changes. So I'm going to leave that. And like I said, I didn't even plant this in here. A piece got in there from that. So somehow I got a piece in here and it took off. I'll see on the tomato plant if I'm going to let it do, make a comeback. And if I do let it make a comeback, then I won't have anything to plant in here. So what I need to do is start thinking about what I want to set up. Whether it's like new totes, like here, the watermelon, that's going to go. Once the watermelon's done, we've got one growing really big. That one's still trying to catch up. And there's another one back here. It's growing. It's small. But you know what? I've had the old tiny ones taste good. But we're at the end of the season. We're cooling down at night. There's some nights that Gary's put a sweatshirt on. It was that cold. This is basically done, except now a squash came out from the pot there. So I'll see and kind of like have these totes ready to go in the spring. Now, in the meantime, I can do the two system and let the worms build up. I can always pick up the bucket and dump it in another tote because I know there'll be worms in there. Whether I see them or not, I know there's going to be worms. And believe you me, I see them. And I can have those two totes ready. So if something grows, like let's say my tomatoes take off or something unusual I want to grow, I will have the totes ready. Think about that. Try to get at least some because you don't have to agonize over where you're going to put it. And that's my issue. I plant too much. And then I'm trying to give seeds to Gary and Gary doesn't want. You know what this is? Pink zinnias. A whole bunch. They keep growing. I had a pink zinnia go to seed and I threw it there. And look at that. Let me show you this. This is what happens when you have spaghetti squash for over a year and nobody wants to eat it. It's a gourd. Isn't that cool? It was sitting in a good spot and it just dried out like a gourd. That's a spaghetti squash. Yeah, we grew so many. And Christmas candy from last year. I'm gonna compost this and take it out of the plastic, of course. And we're not gonna eat that. I didn't, it wasn't made in the USA. I don't know what's in it. To me, I, I tasted it once and I told Gary, it tastes like chemicals. The micros will eat it down. So that's not an issue, I've done that. So I kind of decided to just come out here and do a chit chat. I'm getting more pictures. Let me show you over here. I went to Dollar Tree the other day and picked up a whole bunch more. I decided that Dollar Tree, you know, for $1.25, that's a good deal. Because I was getting other ones and they were $2. There's nothing wrong with them. Those were $2 back there. They were really good. But it's not going to make a difference. Because as you're building your totes and you're dropping them inside, you're not going to see them. And it doesn't matter even if the plastic here is a little thinner because it's going to be under the soil. So it's going to last a long time. See what I'm doing here? I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to get this whole thing set up. I'll clean this one out and I'll have a whole bunch set up where the cups are ready to go. So once I propagate something or decide, gee, I want to do this tomato. I love this tomato. It might die back in the winter. I can propagate it now and sit it somewhere and keep it trimmed and hopefully I can make it through the winter. I'm not doing tomatoes. I'm using that as an example because here the tomatoes will grow all through the winter and if they start to die back, you want to catch them before they go into total failure. Once the whole plant starts to turn yellow and something looks bad, they're not going to propagate good. Now what can you propagate? You'd be surprised. You can do lemon verbena. You can do sage. You can do almost all your herbs, you can do propagation from. If you've got a greenhouse, you can leave them in a greenhouse all winter. Pepino, of course, which is in the tomato family, this nightshade family. Tomatoes, you can't really propagate to hold on, would be like cucumbers, melons. They're not going to make it through the winter. I wouldn't waste my time. But there's just so many things. Like I said, all the brassicas you could propagate. Anything you really want to save. And if you really do have, let's say, some sun gold tomatoes that are the hybrids, the, well, the designed one, you could take cuttings from that and have multiple cuttings and put that maybe on a windowsill or someplace and keep it going. Don't worry how the plant looks as long as it stays alive because once you put it out in the spring and the weather's right, 
the plant will just regrow new growth and take off. So now's the time to start thinking about it. You probably don't have to do it yet. I don't think you're under snow anybody yet, but you're getting close. Start thinking about some of the stuff you want to save. Absolutely tree collard. Even though maybe it's going to make it through your area, just in case something happened and we had a really bad weather go through the winter and knock a lot of plants out, you'd be really happy to have a few of those cuttings in your house. Of course, geraniums, we don't eat them. I've got geraniums on the bottom. They look pretty and the rabbits don't eat them. So I started putting geraniums around for color, you know, because you also want things to appeal to you. You want to be able to come out here and go, isn't this cool? Oh, and a word to the wise. See the garden flag? They come in plastic bags. You probably saw that video on freezing tomatoes. Well, you slide them out and you hang them up, but what you may not know is a lot of the garden flags don't have bottoms to plastic. So it's one, it's a plastic sheet. It's not actually a full bag. And I grabbed it and I went and picked all these tomatoes. There was like 60 tomatoes on here. Picked the whole thing and pulled it out of my shirt pocket. You've seen my pocket I make here because I can carry everything in there. And yes, I had tomatoes all over. I, that was a shock. So I'll remember that for next time. I already have a few more tomatoes popping up here. And I'm going to start walking around and make a habit of bringing in a few. It doesn't matter. Just a few. Even if I bring in one from there and one from there and a few along the driveway. Wash them up. Dry them. If I don't need them now, get them in the freezer. And that's what I was explaining in the video I talked about how they go whiny. What they're doing is they're kind of going sour. They're breaking down. They would fall to the ground and break down. Sometimes they don't fall to the ground. They hang on the plant and you pick them and you go, wow, this is bad because it's starting to turn. It's over, overripe. And they don't get sweeter when they're overripe. They get, I use the word whiny because it tastes like it's going in that form. It's not necessarily bitter. Where your peppers on your plant, they do something different. They dry. And I do sometimes go through, oh, there's a little wasp. Okay, I already took them all off. I froze these. I go through and take the dried ones. We can walk over here for a minute. And I throw them in the freezer too. Wash the peppers, do the same thing, but you don't have to take the stems off. I really should do a video on that because that is amazing to freeze peppers. Those got sunburned with the heat. That's why they're yellow there. Still perfectly fine to eat, but they're sunburned. But see, let's see if we've got some dried ones. I guess I picked most of the dried ones on here too. Now see, this one's dried. See, this is nice and plump. And this one's dried. You can pick those and freeze those too. I actually leave the stem on. I will trim them down to here. And I will wash this, dry it as much as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Freeze it on a tray, on a plate, anything. And then throw them in plastic bags. And then when you go to use them, use them as you would normally. And if I'm making chili or something, I'll leave the seeds in there. You know what? I've grown the seeds. I grew some. I took them out of the freezer, threw them in a pot on the sink, and they grew. But you've got something to hold on to when you're cutting it up, which is really nice. And they freeze fantastic. So yes, you can freeze. Look at that. Shame on me. I'm going to have a lot of compost when it comes to eggplant. I don't eat a lot of eggplant personally. It kind of bothers me. Gary eats eggplant the other day. Oh, there it is. I better get that off. He loves eggplant. So what I'm going to do is pick that eggplant. Hopefully I'll remember to do it later. Slice it up, fry it with some onions, and put it in a glass container in the freezer. No, in the refrigerator. If I was freezing, it'd be fine. But he makes these rice paper wraps. He likes making that for lunch. And he loves eggplant. Eggplant for me... I have an issue with kind of gives me a little bit of a stomach ache sometimes not always but if I slice it salt it let it sit for a half hour rinse it and then do whatever I, oh, there's another one do whatever I want no that's yellow too want to do with it then I don't have a problem so there's something in the water part of the eggplant that the salt will dry out all right well the sun is up and I can work a little bit in my chair garden if I want. Still has a little bit of shade. I think I'm going to go do hummingbirds, get something to eat because I haven't eaten yet. And like I said, I'm going to go through this year and start really getting strong on tearing out what I don't want. And then I'm going to have all these totes ready. Because the first year I set this up, and it's not that long ago, 
it would have been last year. Let's see, the year before, I think. Because this is the second season growing. It was beautiful. The first year with new plants always looks beautiful. And then when you leave them, you've got these straggly plants growing, which is fine. All this had food. Everything you see had food. I've got garlic chives. I've got mint growing in here. Walking onions. There's still tomatoes coming up. There's um, sorrel growing, green sorrel. Look at all the Malabar spinach that I do not use. Um, there's just, and the peppers. But it would look neater, cleaner, and I'd get more production. And it, this way I can come out there and where am I going to put this squash? Where am I going to put this cucumber? I'm going to put it here. So try to think you, you all winter, we, as we go into fall and winter, you've got plenty you can do. Even if it's just, if you're doing tote gardening or, or pots, you know, growing in pots, start collecting and cleaning the yard. Now, once you're under snow, you're not going to do much, but it's okay. There's nothing wrong with whatever you put in there. Once the snow comes and it's all covered in snow, think of nature. That's what happens. The snow comes, covers the ground, and then in the spring, when the snow melts, what happens? You start seeing flowers. You start seeing plants pop up. Well, your totes will be ready. Everything will go dormant. Everything will be perfect as it starts to spring back to life. And you'll be ahead of the game. We don't get snow, but we do get cold and nothing, you know, certain things I should say don't want to grow, but I am going to be ready. As far as a box garden, I'm not sure. We'll see if I want to do it again, but I'm thinking of taking that moringa and maybe putting cucumbers to grow up it because I've got some cucumbers I really like there. But anyways, off I go to have coffee and enjoy this beautiful day and get some stuff done around here, working on a few different things that I want to get done. And then I also want to build with my tubing, the irrigation tubing, a whole lot more all winter and have that ready to go because that has been a total lifesaver. Look at, look at the squash growing there. Everything was being eaten. And once I hooped that in, my squash on the top, I haven't grown any more on the bottom. There's one there on the bottom. They're full of squash right now. There's zucchini in there. This has been great. I just have to think about how I want to set them up and get them set up in areas. So I'm ahead of the game. I'm trying to get ahead and so this way all fall through winter and in early spring I will have everything prepped and ready to go it's just a matter of coming out dropping in my seeds dropping in my little paper cups with my new plants and then stepping away and letting mother nature do its thing so I've wasted your time <laughs> and I just came out here to do some work yeah, I've got my bucket, my soldering iron. I got my new toy that I use with my soldering iron. I can use this sucker anywhere now, and I love it. I don't even need a plug. Oh, we're going to have to talk about that. Oh, yes, because that has been a lifesaver. Might even make a good Christmas gift. Remind me if I forget. I've got a new toy. So with that, have a wonderful day. Look, I'll have more tomatoes real soon to freeze. This is going to be fun. So have a wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.